call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order and ask you to please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We open uh, each regular school committee meeting with hearing of visitors. That's an opportunity for residents to be heard in front of the school committee, the mayor and the superintendent of schools uh, for up to three minutes. Uh, tonight, uh, no one signed up, no one requested to be heard. So we'll go on to the regular agenda. Uh, the first item on our agenda is the consent agenda. This is a uh, block of routine business items for the school committee to consider as one in order to uh, be expeditious and keep the meeting moving right along. However, any member of the school committee may request that any individual item in the consent agenda be removed for individual discussion and consideration. So at this time, I will ask if any members of the committee would like to remove any individual items from the consent agenda. Hearing and seeing none then, I'll entertain a motion on the consent agenda as a whole. Motion has been made and properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Approved unanimously. Thank you. We will uh, now then uh, go on to the uh, report on learning and teaching from the superintendent of schools. Thank you. Uh, tonight, as always, we have our student representative, Jessica Freeborn, here that I know is going to be telling us some of the things happening at Brockton High School. Jess? I'm going to start with um, last Thursday, both the concert band and the advanced concert band put on an amazing spring concert, so great job to both bands. They had great charts that everyone seemed to love, so thank you for everyone who came out to our spring concert. And if you missed the spring concert, come to Brockton High's auditorium tomorrow night at 7 p.m. where the middle school bands will be performing the wind ensemble and the senior jazz band. So don't miss your chance to come see our wonderful performance. Um, Let's move on. So Tuesday, April 28th, several students will be inducted into the National Foreign Language Society. So congratulations to all those students being inducted. It's quite the honor. And in addition, Tuesday, April 28th, there is a medical interpretation ceremony. So congratulations to all those who will be participating in that ceremony. So that's great that we're going to have two events here at Brockton High. Um, I can't believe that Term 3 report cards will be coming out May 4th because the Term 3 ends this Friday. So, and that will lead into AP exams being the first and second week of May. So don't forget to study and good luck to all the AP students taking the test. Um, so this week is Senior Week. So to all our seniors, don't forget to show your school spirit by participating in Sport Day tomorrow. Wear your favorite sports gear and come out to the Senior versus Faculty basketball game right after school. Seniors are definitely going to win that. Um, decade Day is going to be Thursday and Character Day is Friday. And so, um, lastly, yesterday we were evacuated at approximately 7.30 a.m. due to a third bomb threat. After speaking with several students, both yesterday and today, the majority of them felt that the threat was handled with great care. Teachers and administrators reacted quickly, getting everyone out of the building and either to the stadium or on their way home within I want to say almost 15 minutes max. Um, due to the great control of the situation by both our teachers and administrators, students felt safe to come to school today. Our attendance was 93.4%, which is consistent with our usual attendance. So therefore, on behalf of the student body, we all would like to thank you to the teachers and administrators who got us out swiftly and safely. So thank you to our great teachers. That's what happened to Rock Very good. Uh, I, I want to add a couple of things. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, go to the junior prom at the Shaw Center on Friday evening. Um, you have beautiful children. Those are the girls and the guys. Uh, they were, it was packed. There was not room to move. Um, I, I like when I see 
your teachers keeping their distance but having fun interacting with all of you. Uh, the dancing was phenomenal. It was just a really nice thing to be a part of. It's uh, our regular ed students, our special needs students were there. It was a, a great event. So it's, it's always nice to be able to come in and see all of you so dressed up and looking so wonderful. Uh, Jessica, you bring up the situation, so I will go into the situation yesterday at Brockton High School, uh, and, and I will uh, certainly concur with you that with what, and we are not the only school district dealing with this, uh, presently uh, when our first threat came in, uh, I believe on March 20th, uh, we reacted uh, in the way that we needed to at that time. We assessed the level. Uh, also, Whitman Hansen has been dealing with the same thing. And yesterday, Cardinal Spellman also had a very similar threat. All of the threats are similar. Uh, the threat that came through on uh, Monday morning, I will back up a little bit. The second threat came in on Friday. Um, as soon as I got to the high school to work with Principal Wolder, I contacted the mayor. Um, we were fortunate on Friday because you were all being dismissed. The buses were rolling out of here. We had teachers leave the building and we immediately spent, I know the mayor and I spent quite a bit of time Friday and Saturday talking about bringing a team together. We were prepared on Monday morning for checking the facility, for making sure we had police presence. <laughs> Unfortunately, the third threat came in very early on Monday morning and it, we became notified of it as the children were already on the grounds of Brockton High School. Uh, so we also already had a de debriefing planned, bringing in uh, all of our law enforcement in the city, bringing in our IT people. The threat at that point warranted a different way for inspection and I will have Lieutenant Mills and Deputy Superintendent come to speak to you, but what I want to say is to concur with you that by the time I got up here, uh, Deputy Superintendent Thomas and Lieutenant Mills had the Incident Command Center in full force. Principal Wolder had her staff, and again, they had them out the door. The children, the students were orderly. They were doing what they needed to do. And not that you want to have a drill like this. If there was ever an event, we had to get the students off of the campus. There was support from the Shaw's Center, I'm told, across the street with our project grads who are here with their little children. So there was support from the community. The buses rolled in after we had our elementary and our middle school students delivered to their schools because the buses were already en route. By the time we got the buses back here, the students had been picked up by parents orderly. They were off of the property. We didn't have so much as a business complain about our students out in the community that day. So again, I, I want to congratulate our teachers who have been through these drills before, our administration up at Brockton High School, and I would like to invite uh, Lieutenant Mills and Deputy Superintendent Thomas <coughs> to come and to update you. And I will let you know again that the mayor uh, and myself, uh, there was a group yesterday, I want to say about 12 of us, that met. We actually invited Cardinal Spellman to join us. They had never been through anything like this, and we were able to talk about our next steps. Um, there have been a number of parents, and I appreciate the cooperation of our parents in the community that have talked to us uh, about getting together and debriefing with them. Well, quite honestly, we had a plan for a subcommittee <coughs> to go over all the safety and security measures that we have updated the past year or two, and it was a plan that we already had for a subcommittee. So I will be making a recommendation after April vacation to be having a community forum where we will invite not only the parents from Brockton High School, we'll invite parents from throughout the district, and we will talk about our safety and security measures. Uh, first, I want to start by um, the reason why, and I thank you, uh, Jessica, for um, comp your compliments, and that's big coming from the students, because we always think they just see a bunch of old people running around trying to figure out uh, what's going on, but um, you know, I, we appreciate that. That means a lot, because obviously you're the number one people were trying to protect. Um, but I think I want to start going back a few years um, when the school committee, um, probably four years now, supported the REMS grant, five years now, supported the REMS grant. Uh, yep, Mayor Carpenter was on the, the committee then and, and, and a lot of the members here that supported that REMS grant that bought, uh, brought Tobias on board. And then that grant ran out after two years and then you decided as a, as a board to keep him on full time. At that time, you also decided um, 
five years ago to bring Lieutenant Mills over from the school police to, to run school police and, and, and have a command change of school police. So all those things um, put together as long as allowing us to apply for that COPS grant that came actually through uh, the police department um, and it was a shared grant between the police department and the school department and but had to be funded half by the school department's budget uh, and during a tough budget time and that was three years ago um, it was a half a million dollars that the school committee had to put in um, that has allowed us to do the training that we've done in incident command in uh, in the procedures that we have to follow when you have these kind of situations and that's why they're allowed to go as smooth as they are allowed to go because of the support that you've given us um, in the emphasis in the importance obviously you put on safety being number one and it's always been since I've been in this position and since Lieutenant Mills has been with us uh, and with this committee going back is the five years I've been involved it's safety has been number one before anything else can go on obviously in a school kids students staff support staff have to feel safe when they're in a building and that's always been the number one importance and you've put a lot into that over the last five years and and the results of that showed yesterday when things go as smooth as they have when you have to evacuate 4,200 students along with 800 staff members about almost 5,000 people to how to evacuate and uh, you know that's huge and that cannot go understated so we thank you for that so we can answer any questions our lieutenant Mills can jump in and talk more about yesterday's process as well Hi, thank you, Lieutenant Mills, for, for uh, coming tonight. I, I would echo the sentiments of, of Jessica that it seemed incredibly very professionally done. Um, the, the question I would have uh, for Lieutenant Mills is, when we go through situations like this, um, what is the typical reassessment of, of you know, I, I know in security procedures you typically look at something that happened and then you reassess the situation to see how you can do things better, I guess. Do you meet on a regular basis to, you know, go over procedures and? Absolutely. We actually annually always do a check of our policies and our procedures and our practices and how we respond to different types of emergencies and different type of threats. Uh, generally, myself and Mr. Thomas are the, are the key, uh, key people in those assessments and in those meetings. And most certainly, after an incident like yesterday, where we actually get to apply it in a live situation, something that's not a drill, obviously what we learn from those situations provide huge information for us going forward for any possible changes or tweaks we'd like to make to those plans. And those meetings took place as early as yesterday afternoon once it was secured and they will continue to go on and you can probably expect to see a couple of tweaks for September 2015. Yep. And it also has to do with um, and you're always talking to the other agencies it's just not the school department alone um, yesterday you know you get support from the mayor's office the chief of police the fire chief um, that bus for a student um, there's a lot of things that go into moving that many kids yeah. um, and you just can't do it from you have to set up your incident command inside the building obviously with um, the principal and her staff um, but again, the, the teachers, what they did to help and get the kids out and keep everybody calm and, and safe, and you, know, you it just you can't say enough about what they did as well. But it's also the people that not, are not on site that um, that help you from the outside and, and support what went on. Yeah. And now, from a teacher perspective, so the students get this, you know, dismissed to a particular point like uh, they were being dismissed to the Shaw Center or to the stadium or whatever is that the same for the teachers or how many staff would sit the, back the here, way the way we had it set up is that the the closest buildings to the Campanelli Stadium which were the the red and the yellow um, they were to go to Campanelli and the teachers every teacher is assigned every teacher house master assistant house master, obviously in all department has are assigned to a home building so everybody has a building assignment. So even teachers that teach in the gym in the fine arts, they are assigned to a, um, one of the colored buildings. Um, so red and yellow teachers had to go with the red and yellow students to Campanelli, and then Azure and, and Green had to go with Azure and Green students to the Marciano Stadium. So that's how that was set up. So that basically kept, um, you know, 
pretty much close to 400 teachers, about 200 staff members to each of the two areas. Yeah, excellent. And then Thank obviously you. Lieutenant Mills um, was able to then disperse the police officers where he felt they, they were needed yeah. um, with extra help sent from the chief. Excellent. Thank you very much. Custodians, food service workers, and and I guess is secondarily, in retrospect, knowing everybody was safe and all that stuff, was there any impact on on say food service? Because I know like our high school kitchen here is used as a prep kitchen for some of our other schools in the district. You know, yes. They weren't, you know, I mean, with dry storage, cold storage here, food is prepped and delivered out of the high school. Um, How are some of those things managed? Um, Tom um, Burke has it set up when they're not allowed to prepare lunches here at the high school that uh, each of those satellite um, locations have uh, bag lunches available that, that actually fulfill the requirements of the, um, you know, the school lunch, it ha you know, what they have to um, have. And those are on site in emergency situations where you cannot get lunches from Brockton High delivered to the satellite locations. They have bag lunches on site to be able to serve the kids. So that's what we used yesterday. Exactly. Yes. Okay. At the satellite locations. Yeah. Yep. All right. As a parent of two students up here, a freshman and a senior, um, I'd also like to thank everyone that was involved, uh, not only certainly your staff, Mr. Thomas and Lieutenant Mills, but the city also, through the mayor, uh, provided resources and uh, the chief, Chief Crowley, uh, is also involved with other agencies um, to try and you know, assist us. So I think that yesterday was, um, was a culmination of a lot of people coming together and really working together. Um, I'm sure in the debrief there are things that we can always do better, but I think overall um, it was a good grade. Uh, I would wonder if you could comment, um, without disclosing anything too sensitive, um, other agencies that might be now involved since it just seems that this is progressing to uh, a level where you know other districts are involved, and um, you know the the threat uh, the threats seem to be um, increasing. Uh, what what uh, other agencies might be involved trying to assist our local uh, police in our, our district with solving this issue? Well, our district has received three threats. As you know, there's another school within our city limits that received a threat and a neighboring jurisdiction that's received two. So all law enforcement that cover those areas are participating um, with the assistance of other agencies on other state and federal levels and uh, currently actively and aggressively investigating this matter and looking to seek out a perpetrator. So there is, so, the, so for the public to know, there, there is involvement with uh, people that may have an expertise in, in what's going on and yes. what we're experiencing here. Uh, because it, it, our local people are doing a fine job, um, but I think things are getting to a level where there needs to be some involvement with other agencies that um, have more experience and more capability. Uh, to track these types of things. Right. The truth of the matter, Mr. Minicello, is, is at this point we do need the assistance of uh, an agency that has technology that just doesn't, is not available at the local level. Lo local level. Appreciate it. And, and again, um, as, as a parent, I just want to say thank you. I, I felt confident um, and informed. Uh, the messages that came out from the district um, I thought were you know well placed and um, provided me with some you know comfort to know that things are progressing you know in a in a responsible manner. So thanks to the city and obviously the district, the school district, and and everyone. Um, Deputy Superintendent Lieutenant Mills, can you talk about the uh, today and the security that will remain in place, you know, for our students and staff? Yes. Yeah, so. Um, you know, students uh, um, now um, need to wait until 6.45 to enter the building. So we have uh, plenty of staff in place to make sure that everybody enters with a school ID to ensure that everybody entering the building is either a staff member 
or a student. Um, you know, the office, Officer Mills can talk about the extra police personnel he's put on. Um, the obviously we keep all exterior exterior doors closed and locked, and you know we ask um, all staff members to be sure that anytime they walk by a door that it's closed and locked. And obviously nobody allows anybody coming in uh, other than entering through the main office. That's the only point of entry at Brockton High School. Um, once school has started, when students are coming into um, the building now in the morning, they are asked to report to their respective houses. So if you're an Azure House student, you report to the Azure House um, doors and you go in through that cafeteria in yellow, red, and, and um, green as well. Um, and the main office will only be open for people after school has started. If people need to come into the building, um, obviously you have to report to the main entrance. That's the only point of entry into the building. Um, and obviously you have to stop, go through lobby guard. Again, something that we put in place um, four years ago with the support of the committee. Um, and it still remains to this day, and it's been you know, a huge help. Um, with tracking everybody that comes into the building has to go through lobby guard using their license. So we ask, uh, and parents have always been very cooperative, and we ask other people that visit Brockton High who have never been there, that you do have to produce an ID, a valid ID, or a driver's license, and you need to, need to go through lobby guard that runs a quick background check before you're allowed to enter Brockton High. So, uh, and I can let Lieutenant Mills speak about the, um, the extra law enforcement that's been put in place as well. Thank you. Um, well, it would be one, it would be improper for me to actually go into details as far as a police procedure or response. Let me just assure you in the community that there is an increased presence and an earlier presence um, at the facility before the students arrive for security precautions. In addition to that, I also want to make comment on the lobby guard of a change that the uh, high school is willing to do of when visitors do come in and access lobby guard, the l limited number, no longer are they allowing people to sign in through lobby guard and travel throughout the building for menial tasks such as dismissing a student or dropping off a lunch or homework assignment. They're actually doing that in the front office to limit the number of visitors that are roaming the halls of Brockton High. And I actually had an officer at the front of the um, high school today that told me a woman had actually asked was there to dismiss the daughter and started out with, I can't go to the building to get my daughter. And they said, oh no, we're going to have her come to you. And she paused and looked and said, I like that. She goes, so that tells me there's no other parent aimlessly walking around the school. And the officer said, no, miss. And she goes, I really like that. Thank you. So we actually got positive feedback day one from that change. And you know, I think that was a good thing. And if anything we can do to make the students feel safe and the community feel safe about sending their children to school, we certainly want to assist in that manner because Quite honestly, it's, it's my opinion. If, if we can't help you have a safe environment, it's not going to be a good learning environment. Lastly, if I can't, I'm sorry, Mr. Okay. Real quick, I really, from as the police officer, that was the point person for the police department at this, I just want to take a moment to honestly thank all of the staff at Brockton High and especially the students. I was more than impressed at the end when I scratched my head that this went off with such a hitch. Not a single student of over 4,000 created a problem in which an officer had to assist a administrator or a teacher with quelling a disturbance, any kind of a ruckus, anything. They all responded responsibly, did what they were asked, and they did it in an orderly fashion. And Sometimes I just feel, you know, growing up in Brockton, being a Brockton High graduate myself, I feel we get a bad reputation. Let me just tell you from a bird's eye view that I had yesterday, Brockton can be proud of its, of its school and be proud of its students for the way they handled themselves yesterday. And I sincerely thank you. So I could just follow up. So, Tom, I think first of all, to, to reassure you, and I appreciate the fact that Lieutenant Mills can't be too specific. Uh, but we can assure everyone that there is a very active multi-agency investigation going on. The Brockton Police and School Police are working very closely, not just with other local departments, but state and federal law enforcement agencies also. And that, that's ongoing. So uh, there is an active investigation going on. Um, I, I really appreciated Mr. Thomas bringing up some of the history 
because I think it's important for folks to realize that the commitment that we've made over the last few years to safety and security in the schools. Um, I remember the month before I came on the school committee a little over five years ago, you know, we had an incidence of violence here in the high school campus and it was a real wake up call. And um, I know when I first came on that January, Mrs. Joyce and I served on a committee together, a, whatever it was called, blue ribbon panel or something rather on, on safety and security. And coming out of that led to the application for the REMS grant and subsequently the COPS grant. And a lot of change began coming out of that with a restructuring of the school police. This, the school committee made the commitment to fund a regular Brockton police supervising officer to come in and, and take over command of the school police. Uh, through those grants, we've invested a ton of money in lights, cameras, technology, new locks on all the doors. We can electronically open and un lock and unlock doors remotely all over the, the building. We couldn't do that before. Um, Lieutenant Mills has had both school police and Brockton police uh, uh, complete what's called active shooter training. So if they ever had to respond to something like that here, not only they've been trained in it, they practice it. Um, and so there just has been a huge commitment. We had the Dr. Macy report that made a lot of recommendations and, and those were implemented. So uh, lobby guards. So I think that we've really come from five years ago getting a wake up call to today, I think we can say we're at the leading edge of safety and security for public schools. Um, and I think that's what you saw happen yesterday, that as the superintendent mentioned, there had been a couple of previous threats, but yesterday's threat was a little bit different. Every threat is assessed individually, and yesterday's assessment led to a decision that the proper course was to evacuate the building and then further assess the risk, not wait. Um, and, and so that's what occurred. And then uh, working closely with the law enforcement agencies, I think we all fe felt very comfortable to reopen the school for business today, and it was business as usual today. So, um, you know, as the lieutenant said, we debriefed after this yesterday. Every time it's a learning experience, we always identify a couple things that when we debrief that we can maybe tighten up and do a little bit better next time. Uh, but overall, uh, you know, we've, we've made a huge commitment to security. Even in the bad budget years, we've still found money um, to fund safety and security. So parents should feel very comfortable about uh, the level of safety that's here. And uh, I also just want to express my appreciation to the, the school administrators who work so closely with the school police and got the building cleared out yesterday and then we had a chance to uh, assess where to go forward from there. And uh, at the end of the day, we all felt very comfortable to reopen school today, but knowing that everything was uh, safe and secure. So uh, we'll go forward, but we also won't be um, threatened and intimidated into just canceling school every time someone sends us an email. So, you know, we'll, we'll assess each risk as it comes along. But I was. Uh, very pleased to see how quickly the, the school was able to evacuate yesterday. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me move on to park assessment. And I do want you to know that at the end of the year, uh, obviously we're a district that chose park for this year for all the reasons I continue to share. Uh, there's certainly concern throughout the Commonwealth. So uh, what I will tell you is for grades three through eight, remember we have five schools that are doing online. Um, our other schools are doing paper and pencil, and we have had, again, a lot of manpower. So some of, and I don't want to say concerns, but some of the things not a surprise to us, we're using, again, our technology department. We have two park fellows in the district. We have teaching and learning, and it, you know, there's a lot of support in the schools, especially our online uh, schools, as we get through park. We are just finishing up the performance-based assessment, and unfortunately for us, the way the weather has been, the way the testing window is. We have a two week reprieve and we go into what's called end of the year assessment again as part of the park testing. I was attending an urban superintendent meeting on Friday. We debriefed, meaning all of the urban centers debriefed. Many of the comments are the same, the amount of time, the technology, some concerns about the company that's overseeing park, 
But again, this is not field testing. We are actually now in testing mode for those communities that selected park. We just got word, and I'll make sure that it's out in the community. Um, there are going to be forums throughout the state. The closest forum to Brockton, there will be one in Bridgewater. I will get you the dates. I know there are a lot of parents. Uh, when I have had some of the super PACs or opportunities to talk to parents, there is some concern in the district about the park test being used for our high stakes testing. That decision will be made by the Board of Education, uh, probably sometime, I would think, in late November. But the governor has set up these forums throughout the state to hear citizens, to hear parents, to hear school personnel you know, speak about the park testing. So we will have a, an end of the year report, so we'll be able to update you on the positives, uh, negatives, uh, if there are any of each. And we will uh, give you a, a much better assessment uh, on park. I'm not sure if you've had comments come to you or anything else I can address on that. All set. And as far as I, I have had questions again uh, from a number of you and from the community about our calendar. I just want to remind everybody that we are uh, still in negotiations uh, with the teachers union. Part of that always includes the calendar. So we're looking at a number of uh, possibilities. So we do have calendars prepared. The one thing I can tell the community at this point is for teachers, school will open this year on September 1st. Uh, I believe that is a Tuesday, and after it's not, it's not even Labor Day at that point, but it is Tuesday, September 1st. The students will be back on Wednesday, September 2nd. So I would like to be allowed a little more time. Uh, hopefully within the next month, we'll be able to come forward with a recommended calendar uh, to everybody. Uh, good news, I will tell you, um, we had taken Good Friday this year because of wanting to get out of school on June 26th, a half a day, and not go into another week. There are many camps starting, families have plans, and they were very hopeful that we would be able to be out of school on June 26th, a half a day. I will tell you, regardless of what happened yesterday, I have talked to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, and that date will be firm for our district at this time, June 26th, half a day. But to report on the Good Friday, I'm pleased to tell you that in looking at our staff attendance on Good Friday, 95% the Friday before, and I'm just using this as a comparison, was at 94.7. So our staff uh, certainly, again, attended on Good Friday. For our students, the attendance normally the Friday before was about 94.3. It was at 84%. And I will remind everybody that that had been a day off in our scheduled calendar, but due to the inclement weather. So again, that gives you some information on, on how we fared with Good Friday in the district. Um, any questions on the calendar? Or set? And to go on to our budget update, um, we're working very closely. Uh, we've got a number of things happening, but we are trying to, first of all, we do, as usual, the su superintendent's recommended budget. I think all of us would like to think that we had funds to support that recommended budget. We put a number of positions in there, things we'd like to do for the district, programs we'd like to purchase, technology, uh, facility upgrades. Everything is put in for us to have a starting point. Uh, realistically, we start to pare that down so we can then have our school committee recommended budget. I know the mayor has told me he hopes to have uh, figures to us probably sometime after the first week in May. Um, and I'll certainly let the mayor talk about some of the concerns that we have. Again, it's been a tough winter. But um, we are working on all aspects of our budget now. Uh, and we'll continue to have our uh, <coughs> subcommittee meetings. Yeah, I we're obviously building the budget. It's a very uh, thorough process. Uh, we all know there's not enough money. We're going to uh, do the best we possibly can with what we have to work with. Um, the complicating thing on the city side this year is the, the deficit from snow removal, and I just don't know how that's going to come out yet. So the news uh, in the news today about the president uh, signing or approving the declaration assistance for the very first snowstorm is not really anything new that had already been uh, offered to us a while back. We've already filed for that quite some time ago, so that was more of a formality. Uh, so um, if from that particular uh, disaster reimbursement 
would generate about $700,000 of reimbursement to Brockton based upon uh, our cost of that storm that were just, just shy of a million. Um, however, uh, right now our snow deficit is sitting at about 4.2 million. So that's 700,000, you know. It helps a little, but it doesn't help a lot. So, uh, you know, we're going to sit tight. <clears throat> We know that the governor is continuing to lobby in Washington. The mayors are lobbying very hard with uh, our federal congressional delegation. Uh, we've uh, communicated with them a couple times, uh, explaining the plight that all of the cities and towns are in, um, and uh, requesting that we get additional disaster emergency relief from FEMA. So that process is going on. We're lobbying very hard for additional assistance. Uh, but uh, we're not going to be able to finalize the budget by law. Whatever that deficit turns out to be, we have to cover it in the next budget. So um, last year's budget, we had a $1 million deficit to cover coming into the new budget. Uh, a $3.5 million deficit would be devastating. So we're going to continue to lobby very hard and hope for additional assistance. But in the meantime, uh, we're all working very hard on the budget uh, to um, put together the most efficient budgets we can, both on the city and school sides, to meet the needs. That's it. Very good. Um, I want to mention, you see here on the Chief Supervisor of Attendance Report, I'd like to take that out of the consent agenda. Uh, I've spoken to our school attorney. There is no reason it has to be in the consent agenda, and we'd like to just put that in your Friday packets if that's something that's agreeable to the committee. So it would be a change from the consent agenda to your Friday, uh, the packets that you get with information in the district, and we'll have that monthly for you. And now to go on to our facility update um, in the reconfiguration of the Raymond School. One of the things that we'll, I will talk about here is, I, I don't think I have to tell anybody here that since 2010, your enrollment here in Brockton has grown by over 1,600 students, with more than 50% of those students entering our elementary grades. We've been talking since uh, the day I interviewed. One of the things that I continue to say about the school district is the need for a facility master plan. Your master plan can be 10 years, it can be a 20 year plan. Because in, in a district like ours, in a city like ours, there are a lot of needs. We have a high school that's 45 years old. Uh, and again, this is not something that happens overnight, especially with the, the difficult budgets that we anticipate having <coughs> you know, for a number of years. But the best thing that we can do to position ourselves uh, in a place where we can uh, look at new school building, we've had very, very good luck with math school, math school building assistance funds, with renovating a number of our schools, roof projects, boiler projects, Many of you have been very dedicated to those things. The mayor and I have talked continually about not just a facility master plan for the school. I know there's concern for some of the city buildings. So this is something I want the community to know, that it is a priority. Uh, I'm sure in this budget we're looking at how we can fund something like this. And this does, so when the community talks to me about wanting to be involved, we very much want them to be involved. And when you do a facility master plan, whether it's out 10 years or 20 years, you involve the community, you involve quadrants of the city. You start to talk about the configurations of your school. I had a meeting the other day that they're very hopeful that there'll be preschool dollars coming in at some point. We want to make sure that we have facilities that if preschool dollars come in, it starts to solve our dilemma about the very young children coming, the so-called Burr babies. There's a lot of things that we want to position ourselves for in the district to be able to have facilities to accommodate those children. So what we did do this year, no sooner were we finished with school opening, uh, implementing our budget, uh, strategic planning, all of those things that we did throughout the summer, the first thing that we talked about was putting a, a facility subcommittee together to look at the lack of space that we have at our elementary school level. We started, I believe, in October. We had, I think, four subcommittee meetings during that time. And because we looked at our middle schools at a place where we grew in the past 10 years. We went from having four middle schools in Brockton to six middle schools and two K to eight schools. And what we did find was we had space at a number of the schools. So we brought strategically, we did bring together a number of middle school principals to start to talk about. At the time, we were looking at East Middle School that had some space. We invited that principal. 
We invited, invited Principal Carol McGrath uh, from the Raymond School, uh, a K-8 school that, again, a large number of students there. Uh, there, there was, again, concern for elementary space. We also took a look at the possibility of looking at the Plouffe School, where we have a large number of students across Main Street that cross over when we actually made the Arnone the elementary school when we opened up the George. So there's a lot of moving pieces here, but I want you to know that it was thoughtful. We put a number of things on the table. I talked about it very openly at uh, Superintendent PAC meetings that this was something that we were looking at. So uh, after a number of meetings, uh, I made a recommendation uh, to the school committee and to that subcommittee that at this point in time, uh, I am recommending that the Raymond School, which has been a kindergarten to a grade eight school, going forward next year be a kindergarten to a grade five school, which did mean displacing, if you look at the fifth grade as entering the sixth, our eighth graders of course leave to go to Brockton High School, but for next year's sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, we were talking about 250 youngsters that would so-called be displaced to other middle schools. Um, since that time, we have had a, a number of meetings where we're talking about, again, how to support the Raymond School. I actually had an opportunity to speak with the parents. I probably had about 20 parents come. Um, there were, I have to tell you, um, and I spoke to the, the students that were there at the meeting last week, they are our concern. And I want to assure them, again, that the Raymond School has done an excellent job with that middle school population. And I know how that feels when you enter in kindergarten and you go through grade eight, it is like family to you. So at this point here, we're trying very hard to support those parents and those families. We're making sure at parent-teacher conferences this week at the Raymond School, which is on Thursday the 16th and Friday the 17th, that we have our parent information center on site. We have our leadership teams from the middle schools that will be accepting the new registration so that they can ask questions about the middle schools. There were questions to me about getting the students from the Raymond and actually having them take a tour. So I'm going to be looking into that during school time for them to actually go and I'll have to strategically figure out how they visit some of their choices uh, that they will have. But we're very much looking to support parent choices. There were questions about special ed students. We will have special ed people on site to talk about placement for those students. Uh, bilingual students will continue to to make sure that we're supporting the parents through the Parent Information Center um, and having them make choices. We also talked about extending the uh, bus zone that within um, there would be instead of the two miles we would make an exception for a number of students. We have a large amount of space at East Middle School so we would have busing available for those parents that might choose a, a school a little bit farther away we would make sure that they had opportunities for transportation. So at this point, um, again, um, I talked about the facility master plan. Uh, we want the community involved. We want to be able to strategically take a look. But at this point, I also want to make sure that I have elementary space as we watch the growth in those classrooms. I have a number of classes at the George School that are bordering on classes of 29 students in a classroom. There needs to be some additional choices at, at elementary. We're looking at innovation in the North District. We're looking at a district capacity project. So there are a number of things. That was our dual language program. This provides us with opportunities to make some of those changes with innovation, uh, with district capacity, with bringing in programs to, to better support our district. So I am recommending that the uh, Raymond School again be reconfigured for this coming school year to go from a K-8 to school to a K-5 to school with those students being placed in our other middle schools. Okay. Any questions or comments from the committee? Mr. Henningsen. Thank you, Superintendent. Uh, Mr. Mayor. A um, couple questions. So this is in my district, obviously, so it, it definitely hits home. Um, I've spoken to a number of parents, including probably about eight over the phone. Um, I, I can say that the reception was not um, great. Uh, they were concerned about the timing of this, uh, the disruption that it's going to cause to the children, to the parents, um, the choices that they have available, and the fact that they've, you know, grown up in the K-8 to model. Um, some have concerned about the fact that the Davis is not doing the exact same thing, um, and, you know, you know, 
some of the other concerns is why not wait for the facility master plan to be finalized so we're not doing this again, basically. Um, so uh, these, are, these are some definite concerns. I, I hear the parents, and, and I'm concerned about that piece as well, is that you know, if, if we go through the facility master plan and we find out, okay, now there's additional issues that we have, now we're going to be displacing parents again, displacing kids again. You know, it, it, it's definitely concerning. Um, you know, how, how do we assure parents that we're not going to end up in this spot all over again once the facility master plan is complete? Um, these are a couple of assurances that, that I will give you, and, I, and I, I understand the disruption. I looked at the student faces, I have to tell you quite honestly, um, and, and I think this is just the nature of students. There were was, there was some that were excited. They were excited to make a, a, a choice, and yet there were other students. When I was there at the Raymond School the other night, you know, they certainly, you know, looked concerned. You know, this, this was the place that, that, again, that they've grown up in. So I understand that. Um, the assurance that I can make is, again, and I think the mayor and I, you know, together have, have assured the community that this, that this is a priority. Um, we, again, have to take a look at, look at our buildings over a 10 to probably 20 year period. But the one thing I'll say is, you are sitting right now with whatever decisions were made previously, and it probably predates many of us. But there are middle schools that have quite a bit of space right now, and I have elementary schools that have class sizes of close to 29. I could be looking at class sizes of 30. I'll tell you last year, the budget got so tight. If you remember, we originally came forward last year at the Kennedy School with a plan to bring in some additional, well, it was going to be all new modular classrooms <coughs> there, with I think five additional classrooms. And we were not, that would have really kind of relieved some of the stress, at least for this year and maybe another year at the elementary level. We did not have the funding for that. We went in and used our own craftsmen. We updated those modulars, but we were not able to add, uh, cl I think we added two classroom spaces. But we did not have the, the capacity that we needed. So at this point here, what I can assure the parents is we will have a facility master plan, but again, we will have some short-term goals during that time. Um, you know, there, there are going to be changes, and the changes are made to support families. You know, I understand the disruption, you know, to uh, students, but again, it, it's to support them the best way that we can, and I have to look at class size for those elementary students at this time. That is a priority. And the, just the other two questions I have, um, what would be the, the ramifications if we did not do this and we waited for the next, if we did wait for the facility master plan, number one, and number two, why couldn't we just when new kids come into the district for six, seven, and eight, just send them to those alternative um, schools? Well, we, we certainly, when you talk about 260 <coughs> students, so if new students come into the districts, usually, I, I'm not sure, I think there was a waiting list at the Raymond, I know there certainly is at the Davis, they're not choosing those schools anyway. You know, they all are already going to some of the places such as, as East Middle School, wherever we have openings. But again, we are sitting on some of our middle schools that have large numbers of openings for two and 300 students. And yet, again, I have elementary schools where you know, we start to shut down classes when they're reaching sizes of 24, 25 in some of our really high needs classrooms across the district, Huntington School. You know, you don't want to get up to your middle, your elementary school of class sizes of 28, 29, you know, possibly 30, while I have middle school space sitting there for this coming year. Your middle school classes, as we're looking at these numbers, are still, they're probably approaching 24, 25, but they're not 27, 28, and 29. So to wait a year, I'm not sure what the benefit would be you know, for our students for the coming year. I still would have large class size at the elementary, uh, to the point that parents have very few choices. If you start to shut down the George School, which we actually did this year in a number of the classes, you know, there was no way, we, we disrupted the district, if you recall, because parents that are so-called out of zone because the class sizes got so large at the Kennedy, at the Brookfield, we were dealing with phone calls from those parents that made choices for their child entering kindergarten when a space was available, but because of students that lived in that zone, 
those students had to be relocated this year and that also is not to have no lee room at a, uh, leeway at all at an elementary school is detrimental to those students that have been in those schools for three and four five years some of them so i do feel at this time that I, I know this displaces our you know, 250 or so students, but I think district-wide it supports all of the teaching and learning that's happening instruction-wise, <coughs> classroom space-wise, and it allows us to put a facility plan together or at least certainly put the facility master plan so it is funded and we can start working with, a company actually comes in and works with you, it works with the district. Yes, yeah, so can I make a comment there, Mr. Hankson, just follow up? So, um, I agree with the superintendent on the need for the facilities master plan. I'm going to have to work closely with the city council to figure out exactly how we're going to pay for it because uh, the end of the process, the city council approves the budget. Um, so I think we're committed to doing it. The exact timing and how we're going to pay for it, I think will evolve over the next 60 days as we get the budget done. Um, you know, do we fund it out of current cash? Do we split it into two years budgets? do we try to include it with some borrowing and build it into some borrowing? Um, and I don't have the answer for that yet. That was, that'll all be part of the budget process this year. And I did agree with the superintendent on us doing a citywide facilities master plan because once you're doing it, it's not that much more money to do it for all the city buildings instead of just the school buildings. We know on the city side we have fire stations that are outdated and in poor condition. We have an antiquated police station. We've got questions about our library buildings. So really, there is a need for the city to look at all of its facilities and bring someone in to evaluate it. I don't really know that, I mean, a facilities master plan is going to make recommendations. It's not going to make student assignments. That's something that the school administration, you know, does on an annual basis. So, you know, from my standpoint as mayor, I'm not looking to micromanage the, the school department of figuring out who should go where. I think. You know, the school committee will work closely with the administration as to how to best address the needs. Um, but it does seem to me that over the last four years, our student population has grown a net gain of over a thousand students. In that time, we've added one small school bringing back the, the Bertrand Russell, Russell Kindergarten. So we've had to fit a lot of bodies into existing buildings with only one building being added. Um, there are no new buildings coming online in the next year or two. So I think it is going to force some tough decision making in terms of I think the school administration is going to have to figure out how they can best use every square inch of classroom space that's available so that at the end of the day we've got good teaching and learning environments with students and teachers that have reasonable class sizes and good facilities to learn in. And, you know, it seems like the one place where we do have some excess capacity right now is at the middle school level. So I think, you know, we really are going to have to have some hard thought and decisions. And my guess is this is the, f the first or perhaps more than one um, rearranging of, of the middle schools in order to make sure that if we can be more efficient with the use of the middle school space, create some additional space for elementary school classrooms while we get the facility master plan done, while we work this year with four schools with the uh, accelerated repair program with MSBA to make sure that we are uh, preserving and properly maintaining what we've got while we figure out how to add capacity. And then I think you know, this year I'll be working uh, closely with the superintendent with the school committee on a plan to apply for a, a new school next year. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's no doubt in my mind that, I mean, we need at least one more new school today and we probably need two in the very near future. We got to get working on at least one. So we're very early on, you know, with your facilities uh, subcommittee looking at potential sites for a new school and, you know, working with the administration on preparing to apply to MSBA next year for, for funding of a school. And it, it all comes back to budgetary decisions too. So I think that um, I think we're going to have a lot of tough decisions to make to preserve the quality of education for our kids and make sure that all of our kids are getting the same opportunities. 
Other things you looked at also were, we talked about leases. We looked at other buildings, uh, even in the area, there was concern about sprinklers. We had looked at, I know a church school, I believe the St. Margaret's at one point, uh, which is now owned by the Lutheran Church. But we looked at a number of things to try to relieve some, some pressure in the district. And it was not something that we could either afford at this point. Um, this again was, was the option that, that best fit at this point in time, but I also agree when you talk about a facility master plan and you're talking about mass school building assistance, they look to make sure a community has that if in fact you're going to get funds to build a new school, new schools, they want to make sure that there is a plan in place. And, and last year the facility subcommittee did look at, uh, uh, did look at both the, uh, the Whitman and Howard schools to see what the potential was to bring them back online and they were just cost prohibitive. They were in the millions of dollars. And, you know, to oversimplify a little bit, if it cost us $10 million to build a brand new school building and we got 80% of that money reimbursed from the state, we in essence would end up with a brand new school building for $2 million. That is going to make a lot more sense in the long run than spending 4 or $5 million to try to renovate and bring back an old school building that even after all that money being invested in it is still not going to have the amenities and the facilities and the technology and all of the things we're looking for for our kids. So, you know, I think had there been a feasible uh, retooling of one of the existing school buildings, that would have been a way to get a school building the fastest. But I think there was a pretty strong consensus by the committee that the price tags were just exorbitant to try to bring back one of those old school buildings and it made more sense to look towards let's start looking for a site and figuring out how to uh, get in queue with the state for potential funding for a new school and that takes time and I think we probably have to buy ourselves two or three years mm -hmm. of you know reorganizing to get to that point to get another new school online so um, the decisions aren't going to be easy, and I'm, I'm sure that the administration will work very closely with the committee on coming up with a plan. And I understand, Mr. Henningsen, how some parents feel with, um, in essence, it's two grades of kids at that school being displaced. The eighth graders were moving on anyhow. The fifth graders haven't got there yet, but it's this year's sixth and seventh graders are going to go on to another school. Change is tough. It's the model that's used all across the entire city except for the one other school. Um, so I, I, th I think that I, I'm, I think we're sensitive to the concerns, but we, we've got to make um, more efficient use of our middle school space. Anyone else? Okay. okay. Um, and the only other under items to refer to subcommittee. Um, I mentioned the date. We have the April 28th date presently on there with budget. We'd like to have uh, a safety and security uh, subcommittee meeting that evening where we do a presentation to the public. Um, I believe you already have it um, in your calendars. We were hoping to start it at 6.30. I think that gives people a chance to get home from work. And my recommendation would be that we have it up here in the auditorium so that we can invite our Brockton High School parents, a number of them reached out and talked about that to us, but also district-wide, because I think it's, it's much bigger than Brockton High School, and we talk district-wide about safety and security in all of our buildings, some of the things that we've done. Uh, I know Lieutenant Mills has um, a presentation prepared with Deputy Superintendent Thomas. It'll allow us to answer questions that evening if parents uh, have questions. So I would recommend uh, April 28th. It's after our April vacation. I think that we all have received phone calls and conversations from concerned parents. Um, this is something we had spoken about before. We were going to have a safety and security, I think, subcommittee. Um, and then after that meeting, have uh, an opportunity for parents. They can attend the subcommittee meeting. They're welcome to. Um, but then have a, uh, an opportunity to, for some information um, have um, law enforcement there. If the chief wants to come, certainly the mayor will be there. And um, oh, you won't be there. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm out of the country. Do you want us to schedule it when you're back? I would prefer to be on a date that I can make. Okay. okay. Um, so we will talk to the mayor and Mr. Buckley about his schedule. Sure.
and then we'll figure out a, a, a date yep. that you'll be present. I assume you'll want Chief Crowley there. I think it would be good to have Chief Crowley, Lieutenant Mills, right. Mr. Thomas have the whole and team. The public there. can have an opportunity to certainly voice their concerns, get in, as much information as we can provide to them with respect to you know this ongoing investigation, and, and try to just. Um, answer some questions that people may have in terms of why certain things are happening um, and to explain certain procedures that are in place um, so that they have some uh, clear, clearer um, view on in terms of what's been going on and why certain things are happening. So we'll, we'll pick a new date when the mayor is Very back good. in town. Okay. So, uh, one quick thing with respect to the, um, the report um, by the facilities subcommittee do we yes. need to take action on that tonight, or? Yes. What's that? We have the report. Right, but didn't we just pass over that? The, the pre, did we need to vote on that yes. report that you, uh, what I'm saying is, yes. are we doing that after this? Shouldn't we have re voted on the report previously, or do, are we doing it? Well, we need to vote on it this evening. Right, but I'm saying, shouldn't we have done it five seconds ago? Instead of moving on to another item. Um, I wasn't sure if it came under new business. Oh, uh, well. Uh, <laughs> What's your pleasure, Mr. Minichello? <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. I'm just saying, I mean, we, we just went over a report, and then we just sort of moved on. And I'm like saying, do you want to vote on it or not? So or would the motion be to accept the report, or is the motion to... Yeah, there's two motions. Okay. All right, I'll entertain a motion if you'd like to craft one. All right, so motion to accept the report okay. as presented. Second. There's a motion made and properly seconded to accept the report of the facility subcommittee. All in favor? That's approved. So now we'll have a second motion. Then there would be a, a motion to um, approve the recommendation with respect to the Raymond as presented in the report. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor to approve the recommendation made by the report of the facilities subcommittee for the reconfiguration of the Raymond School. Yeah. Motions for properly seconded. On the motion. On the motion, please, please just read what the motion is so there's a clarification of exactly what that is. Because it does, it does involve what the schedule is, when it's going to be implemented. Could you do that for me, Mrs. Sure. Joyce? You I seem have to be focused. All right, there you go. The motion, so the motion <laughs> references this language in the report, but Mrs. Joyce will read it into the record so that it's clear for everyone. Right. Uh, the motion was to implement the reconfiguration of the Raymond School and facilitate the students, parents, and staff in a smooth transition to a K-5 school following a Tier 2 schedule with an opening date of September 2015. Thank you. Okay, so that's the motion that's on the floor. It's been proper. Oh, go ahead. We're still on the motion. Still go right ahead. <coughs> I, I would reiterate the concerns that we all in this room have with respect to um, the students. I mean, this is not an easy, um, an easy item to vote on. Um, the problem, like the mayor basically succinctly points out, is that we have an abundance of space right now in the middle school. There's uh, there's room, and we have an overcrowding in the elementaries and you know, this is not something that we take lightly. Um, we know that there are not, you know, any new schools coming down the pike. Even if we got an approval today, it's going to be a, a three to five year process. Um, and um, like you pointed out, we looked at the Whitman School. A nice, bold building, but it, I think it was going to be $4.5 million, and it made absolutely no sense to renovate a school that has such a small footprint, no fields, no, no space. Um, and you know the Howard, as we said before, had mold issues, and it also had radon. As we, and we took our time in terms of, yeah, it had a host of different problems. Um, this is not an easy decision for any of us, and we certainly sympathize with all the parents who um, have concerns over this, and all the students. Um, so it's it's not easy for anyone. Um, but in in the in 
our role as a school committee is looking for the best interest of the district and what makes sense fiscally um, and, and you know we certainly spend money as was pr uh, previously pointed out with respect to safety and security in tough budgets we decide and prioritize what we can spend money on we got criticized for that at times you know what are you a police force or a school district you're spending money on law enforcement and all this and then in these certain situations you know people say oh geez you, you did the right thing because things are smooth well unfortunately in this situation we're not happy about what we have to do but in the long run I think it's going to provide many students you know with an environment that's manageable for them where teaching and learning um, can take place in a in a more efficient manner than currently what we're looking at district-wide we all know you know we have an inc when I first came on the committee with Mrs. Joyce here, we had like 15,000 plus kids. It's over 17,000 right now. And there have been no new elementary schools coming online. So um, this is a difficult decision for all of us on the committee. I certainly sympathize with Mr. Henningsen. Um, but, you know, that being said, we move forward. We have to move forward, unfortunately. Would anyone else like to be heard on the motion? Okay, then uh, do we have a second on the motion? I think Ozzie seconded. Okay, seconded by uh, Mr. Jordan. All in favor? Opposed? Please note Mr. Henningsen as a no vote. Okay. Okay. So uh, we'll move on to new business. Anything anyone would like to bring on? to the floor for discussion on a new business. Oh, come on, there's got to be some new business. No? Superintendent? I'm all set. You've gone through your whole list? I have. All right. Well, in that case, I guess I'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. Motion made, seconded by Mr. Robinson. All in favor? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you for your attendance.